Yo, welcome to Let's Talk Wrestling, new entry wrestling. It's been a while since I've done this because uh, I actually went to WrestleMania for Philadelphia. I was there for like five days, also there for Maryland. Uh, try, and I also went to Delaware. Delaware? I don't remember where I went. It was a long vacation. So anyways, go check out episode 172 and 73. If it hasn't come out yet, go check out my vlog video, my experience for WrestleMania 3. 40. Anyways, let's talk wrestling. Let's go. This past Monday night on Raw, Chad Gable finally turned heel when he turned his back on Sami Zayn after their match, after their incredible match for the IC title. Finally, Chad Gable, it is turning heel. Hopefully, eventually, there's going to be a certain time and place where he takes the title off Sami Zayn. And Sheamus made his return back to Monday Night Raw facing Arvark. I can never pronounce his name properly. But yeah, happy that Sheamus came back. He came back with his old theme song. Well, a little remix with his current one with the fight night or... So yeah, super excited for Sheamus to come back. I heard rumors that he was supposed to come back at Backlash, that he was going to be next in line to face Cody Rhodes. So it's going to be pretty interesting in the direction where this goes. It was also announced that Rhea Ripley will be vacating her Women's World Championship on Monday Night Raw. It, I believe this marks her down to 380 days. She ties with Bailey. If they would have just waited another week to make this announcement, uh, clearly it's a bad shoulder injury. She probably requires surgery. Um, so I feel like that's why they vacated the title so quickly. I do have a few issues about this because it's like one, while she had she during her run as women's champion, she barely defend the title. I understand now that she's injured. Again, unless she needs surgery and all that, then it, I understand why she had to vacate the title. But if it's just like a separated shoulder kind of thing where she's going to be out two months, it's like, why not have a tournament to, you know, that would at least give her another month or two for recovery. If it's going to be more than three months, then it's like, hey, you know what? You got to vacate the title. Uh, but I wouldn't really want her to break Bailey's record do even though she hasn't really defended uh, but the fact that she tied with Bailey at 380 days actually that's an accomplished and also like what are the odds of that happening so hopefully uh, a speedy recovery for Rhea Ripley and that way we could get to see Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan at whatever pay-per-view I'm pretty sure hopefully by SummerSlam WWE Triple H just brought in the new tag team champions for Monday Night Raw. Uh, I actually like them. There's some people that have mixed feelings about it. I actually like them. Definitely way better than the, you know, the ones that they've been using for years. So these give it that more classy look. And also, it's probably going to be the same thing for the tag team titles, except it's going to have, instead of the red part, it's going to be blue, which is fine. Uh, me and my co-host ever we talked about it before saying like i it's either have the name of the tag team title smackdown on raw or have the color theme don't have both the fact that they had both it was like the smackdown tag team titles but the title was all you know the strap was blue and then for the raw it was the raw tag team titles and it had the red strap it was just it was just too much have one or the other don't have both and with this one, Trip Wish is basically going to a different direction. So I love these tag, tag team titles. These are tag team titles where it's like, damn, it makes me want to be in tag team, you know? So, and they and they finally have a stacked tag team division. It's been a while since they were lacking on that. And now, you know, they, they're, they're good on that part. Also, Logan Paul just announced that he is going to have a mini prime baby. Congrats to Logan Paul. There's rumors to believe that AJ Styles will be done with the WWE, that he's going to retire overall. 
Uh, there's rumors that he may retire, that his last match will be against Cody Rhodes at Backlash. I really hope that's not the case. I really hope he goes, I don't know, another year or at least until SummerSlam. You know, I'm, he. I feel like AJ Styles deserves to retire at a big stage. I'm not saying maybe wait till WrestleMania next year. Um, I feel like, I mean, that would be awesome if he could wait till next year's WrestleMania to retire. But let's face it, it's going to be outshine or outshadowed by whatever is going to happen next year's WrestleMania. I feel like, you know, AJ Styles is from Atlanta, so maybe he could retire on a show there or maybe at Florida. So if they're going to have a, a premium live event at a Florida, you know, I feel like that would be a nice place for AJ Styles to retire. But AJ Styles has had a lot of classic matches at SummerSlam so I feel like SummerSlam will be a good choice for him to retire in and one last thing I want to add to this with the whole CM Punk Jack Perry footage what did that accomplish absolutely nothing I don't know why they showed it I don't know why they aired that backstage footage all they did was confirm that CM Punk was telling the truth that's all it did you know and I just want to know why it the EVPs, Young Bucks, what are their roles as EVP? Like, why is CM Punk talking to Jack Perry? Why isn't the why isn't the Young Bucks going up to Jack Perry and say, "Hey, you can't do this, you can't do that"? You know, I don't understand. Or better yet, just the Young Bucks should handle it. If Tony Khan can't do it, should then the Young Bucks do it? And Kenny Omega, even Kenny Omega just said that. He he lost his role as the EVP because he doesn't know what to do. You know, I, I, I really don't understand the Young Bucks. I don't understand Tony Khan. You know, it's not AEW. It's the issue is Tony and the Young Bucks, you know, and the AEW fans. No offense. But, I mean, I love I love the wrestling that AEW does. But the storyline, that's what they're lacked on. But everybody's been knowing that part. You don't watch AEW because of the story. You watch AEW because of the wrestling. You watch WWE because of the entertainment and the storyline. And then here and there, you get some good classic wrestling matches. AEW, you simply just tune in to watch wrestling. That's it. I do appreciate a good storyline here and there. But, you know, that's the one thing they lack on. So TNA, they have great story, but the wrestling, their in-ring, it's it's good. It's decent, you know. It's not like how it used to be. But that whole footage with CM Punk, that didn't do nothing for them. It didn't pull, it pulled 800 views, so 800,000 views, which is an average but for AEW. But the fact that they needed CM Punk once again to draw, because I think previous it was like 700 or two, 600, so that footage drew them another 200 if that and it was a this is what bothered me about the footage they had a stack card a stack card for dynamite that week and it just got outshadowed because of the footage so they really did not thought this through it backfired on them so i don't know what's gonna happen and jack perry wrestled at the windy city riot Wearing the Crimea River jacket, Chicago flag, and it's just like, damn, bro. Like, you really need CM Punk to get over. You, you just can't. You can't get over CM Punk, but you're trying to get over him. It's just, it's nonsense. He's the scapegoat of what. And also, why if the Young Bucks think that Jack Perry is innocent, that he's the victim, why can't he bring him back? Can they bring them back? Like, what is their role as EVPs for AEW? Like, I really don't understand. Why did he get suspended and not fired, but yet they fired CM Punk? So, the only people that can answer that is Tony Khan, but we're not going to get the truth off him. So, anyways, this wraps up. Let's talk wrestling. New entry wrestling. Doo-doo-doo!